Hi, my name is Ho Victor Ossian, and I'm coming from the country of Iran, which before it used to call Persia, the country of Darius and Cyrus the Great, and the uh, land of where Daniel and Esther uh, are buried right now, and their tombs are, uh, people go visit in their tombs, and that's where I'm coming from. I was born and raised in Iran, in an Armenian home. Uh, my parents weren't Seventh-day Adventists, but my aunt was Seventh-day Adventist. And uh, from the childhood, he took us to Adventist church. As a matter of fact, we were dedicated in Adventist church. And uh, I grew up over there until 25 years of age. And then after that, we immigrated to the United States. As you can see, I'm dressed up as a path in Pathfinder uniform, and I'm a Pathfinder director for PUC's Howl Mountaineer Pathfinder Club. And I was Pathfinder even back in Iran. And there were times that we would go camp out, and we would play charades over there. And the idea was one day that our Pathfinder pastor was playing Elijah, so we put rocks, Megan made an altar over there, and we put some wood on top of it. But while the kids were playing somewhere else, we put a very invisible wire from the altar to the huge mulberry tree. And I was playing God. So I went over there with a cup full of gasoline, with the ring attached to the uh, invisible string, with the cotton around it. So what we did, I was over there until it got dark, and then our pastor started uh, playing as the Elijah, and he was asking for fire to come down. So when he was asking second time, yelling, God, please send fire to show your uh, power, I was supposed to turn uh, the cigarette lighter, uh, catch the ring on fire and send it down in the wire so nobody can see where the fire came from. But I was, as I was trying to light the lighter, it wouldn't, and all of a sudden, the cup full of kerosene gasoline poured in my hand, and at that moment, cigarette lighter caught on fire and started, my whole hand started burning. Of course, the play was success because the ring went down, everything over there caught on fire, everybody was happy. Ooh, where the fire comes from here? I was up there with my hand on fire. I tried to shake it off. It wouldn't, so finally I had to put him under my arm and pulled it out. The entire skin on my left hand came off. But I stayed over there until everything was over, and then I climbed down. And then they, when they saw my hand was... Uh, all the skin was off, so we had to go to the clinic to fix it up. But one lesson I learned over there, that never play God. <laughs> there is only one God, and that's what we have to rely on. Before I was a pathfinder, I loved going to junior camps. And it's just one of my favorite things. I couldn't wait until summertime comes so I can go to junior camp. And I started in from early childhood, eight years old, even though camp, we, they were accepting 10 years old, but I was eight. I went to junior camps because my auntie was a camp cook. So I would go over there and I already knew everything what they were doing until when I turned 10, I started going to junior camp. Until I was 15, they asked me to be one of the counselors. And I thought it was an honor for asking me to be the uh, one of the camp counselors, so I became a counselor. But even then, I had a little bit of naughtiness in me, so uh, we always liked to play tricks on different counselors, especially the ones who would come in new. And one of the things that we did, I remember, when a counselor was sleeping, we had this uh, bed made up, the counselors would put it in front of the tent they were counseling, and they would go to sleep. Some of them were heavy sleepers. So we would go, four of us, grab the bed and lift it up and take it to putting in the shallower part of the swimming pool. 
and the council would sleep and then all of a sudden in the morning we were all sitting over there you would see he would wake up and just walk right into the water and we got kick out of that and they soon learned to be how to not to sleep heavily <laughs> and so uh, the tricks we played in there it was fun kind of things we did during the camp it made everybody happy <laughs> <laughs> During my years in Iran, when uh, I was Pathfinder, Pathfinder, one of our Pathfinder director, uh, Johnny Manassian, he became the principal of the academy I attended to. And uh, he has an amazing story. He would always tell us, and it would bring tears in our eyes. Uh, in Iran, when you want to go to Middle East College, which it was a college most of the Iranians, uh, Adventists would go, uh, you have to serve the military before you leave the country. So what he did, he went, enrolled himself, he became one of the soldiers. This was the first week it was, they gave him a duty being a guard on Friday afternoon and he told them from sundown Friday and then sundown Saturday he can't be in the military service and they said what is this nonsense you're talking about you can't do that this is the Iranian army you're talking about he says I have to serve God at that time I go to church I worship my God and I can't Oh, they said, there's no such a thing over here. The Iranian army is your God. You have to serve them, not your God. He said, I can't do that. They said, well, if you don't stop your nonsense, they're going to court-martial you, and they're going to kill you, put you to death. He says, I'm rather, I'd rather lose my life than lose my eternal life. So they said, well, then you have to go see the general. It was a five-star general that he was supposed to go see. But they tried very, very hard to make his life miserable for a few days. They had him barefooted, standing four feet of snow. And then after that, they told him he has to go see this general. So he gladly accepted it and he went to, he had to go through four different uh, colonels who were the secretaries of the general until he got to the general's uh, office he knocked on the door he said come on in with the rough voice and he goes inside he says this general office huge office he's sitting way in the corner and he stood over there at attention and he said come on closer so he went closer and he said uh, what is this nonsense you don't want to serve the army on saturday night what is it this saturday that you're talking about and uh, he said, yes, Saturday is the, my rest day that I, can, I have to spend with my God. And he says, while General was talking to him, his head was down and he was writing something. And then he started thinking about it. Maybe he was writing that his death sentence or something. But then all of a sudden, General just put his head up and says, started singing. He says, Man in Jogaribam Arshambatan. Famous hymn. I'm not but stranger here. Heaven is my home. He said, his eyes got big. He said, Where did you hear that? He said, then he says, Come on closer, son. Come sit down. So he went and sat. He says, I went to your Adventist Academy for four years. I know all about you Adventists, and I know there is nothing I can do to uh, make you to serve the military from Friday to Saturday. He says, what I wrote here, it's a letter that gives you permission. All four years you're going to be serving here, you're going to be permitted, I mean, you're going to be exempted. You can go and serve your God. And that shows that God works in every way. Even those students that they come to our academies, they're not Adventists. They learn something from there. They take something home. And sometimes it comes to our aids and it helps us for them, what we teach them. 
I told you I, it brings tears in my eyes, in everybody's eyes, even when Johnny was telling, it always brings tears in his eyes that God saved him like that. During my Pathfinder year, when I was 14 years old, our youth pastor gathered a few of us together. They asked me, ask us that uh, if we are willing to go with him, he will coach us to go have evangelistic meetings in different villages. And I showed an interest, and his nephew also showed an interest, which was one of my best friends. So we decided to go during the summer to uh, different villages and have evangelistic meetings over there. The villages were so remote that they had no electricity, so we had to take this uh, youth pastor's car battery and use it to show uh, slide projectors. And we had to do it fast because we had to put the battery in the car in order to uh, drive it again, so we didn't want to use the battery so much. So we would uh, preach over there. One night I would preach, one night my best friend would preach. Uh, one night it was my turn to talk about, I was talking about when the Jesus, second coming of Jesus will be. And uh, the word in Armenian is yerknasharj, which is uh, for cars, and inknasharj, well, sorry, the other way around. Yerknasharj is more earthquake, and inknasharj is for cars. So I was so wrapped up and talking so quickly, I said, Towards the end of time, there would be a lot of cars. And then I caught myself what I was saying, and I said, and there would be a lot of earthquakes. And then my pastor said, good recovery. <laughs> so, but the interesting thing was, uh, I had a translator who was translating in Turkish. But he was an older guy. And uh, so what I did, First year I came home and both my auntie and my dad speak Turkish also. And my dad said, I'll teach you how to do Turkish all year round until summertime comes, you will be fluent. Then you can uh, speak, preach yourself. Um, so that's what I did. All year round I was speaking Turkish, even though sometimes when I would ask my auntie a question in Armenian, she wouldn't answer me. She wanted me to ask him in Turkish. So I did and I learned. And then when I went back the next year, with God's help, I was able to preach in Turkish. And I was proud of myself doing that. Uh, so it was wonderful to start uh, like that from just 14 years old, uh, wanted to do uh, preach to the gospel to people. And that's one of my goal is now I'm trying to teach my Pathfinders the same thing. When you're a Pathfinder, you're not only Pathfinder in the club, but you're a Pathfinder outside and you have to show it. In our three years of evangelistic meetings we did in uh, provinces in Iran, uh, the first year we had uh, 20 baptized, we baptized 20 members. Second year was almost 30. And then the third year we had 55 out of three months evangelistic meetings we had. We were so happy. We couldn't wait till we come back to the mission and tell everybody uh, that uh, we baptized 55 people at the last year that I participated in that. And it just makes you feel so good that when you see people giving their heart to you. and. Uh, they would come and tell us pastors, and we said, no, we are not pastors, we are just students, we're just here, we like working, we love working for God, and that's what we are doing. In our young age, even then, uh, we were so happy and thrilled to see that people giving their heart to Jesus, and it was making us happy. It's not because of what we did, because what how God worked in their hearts through us and that made us happy.